Hey guys, this is Monsol with Nutripedia and welcome to the first Think Smart Thursday video series. So from now on, in order to help people that would prefer to watch videos rather than read emails, I'm gonna create a Think Smart Thursday video every week to go along with the email. Now, I would recommend you subscribe to the email list as well because there's lots of links, etc., that you can find if you are subscribed there. So for today, March 8th, we are gonna first talk about a couple of studies. One of them is a couple of studies that were focused on the use of blueberries in order to improve cognition and memory. Now, for most people, eating more fruits and vegetables is probably helpful in general, but this is a really useful way to improve markers of cognition and memory through a fruit, which is relatively non-invasive. Usually I talk about supplements, and for a lot of people who are reluctant or skeptical to either buy the supplements or just have a stack of many different ingredients it's an interesting feature of blueberries that you might consider when you go to the store next time now what I found most interesting about these studies is it focuses on kids age 7 through 10 so first of all if you are a parent and you have kids it might be a good idea to incorporate more blueberries in their diet from some of the literature it shows that the reason they focused on kids was because there was already enough evidence on adults so according to the few studies that exist on adults, blueberries do have a positive impact on cognition and memory. Now the problem with this specific study is that they claim that children using blueberries don't see any added benefit for reading comprehension. So if that's something that you are looking for, and obviously for kids that's something that's very important, then you might want to find something else. But it is interesting that both cognition and memory are influenced by this very specific chemical that is in blueberries. Now the chemical's name is anthocyanin. I've never heard of it before, but it's interesting to find in some of the other studies that I link in the email. Now, what I find most interesting is that there's not much discussion on how they got the blueberries to the participants. In one of the studies, they used wild blueberry powder, so that's some type of blueberries that have been freeze-dried and to me that makes me wonder whether it's a more concentrated dose or an extract so I can't be certain that a handful of blueberries is gonna make any kind of a difference it might be that you need some kind of a, a wild blueberry powder as a drink or as a smoothie additive but in any case it seems to be an interesting potential benefit that you can use especially if you're taking smoothies on a regular basis now the second study that I found interesting in this week's Think Smart Thursday was around a polyphasic sleep schedule. And for those who are not familiar, what this means is the sleep schedule where we sleep multiple times throughout a day. Most people in modern environments have a monophasic sleep schedule, which means they sleep for one big block at night, and that's easiest for the, the standard modern civilization that we live in. But from an ancestral perspective, we actually had a more polyphasic sleep schedule. When we were in tribes, when we were in a more ancestral environment, it was more likely that we would sleep for a few hours, then decide that we wanted to go do some hunting, and then come back and do some more sleeping. And so oftentimes it might be broken up into three to four hour segments over the course of the night. Now there's a lot of people in the modern world who have messed up sleep schedules. And one of the things that I found interesting, even though this study is from 1988, is that the best sleep scenario as a polyphasic sleep situation was to sleep anywhere between 20 minutes to one hour and sleep at four and a half to five and a half hours in total. So they did this study on 99 sailors. They focused on their performance based on their different sleeping schedules and they found that this, this odd increment of 20 minutes to an hour only adding up to four and a half to five and a half hours was best for performance. Now, I don't particularly suggest that anybody use this, work backwards and create some kind of a regimen that allows you to sleep four and a half to five hours. My inclination is that probably will be detrimental for cognitive abilities. But I did find it interesting that people have this 20 minutes to one hour increment and in doing so can actually sleep less with high performance. This seems to be most applicable when there are situations where you're forced to stay 
stay out late and you wake up early anyway, or just nights where you might not get enough sleep, or people who have schedules because of night shift working where things get shifted, it might be useful to consider naps. And oftentimes people feel guilty about taking naps. They often feel groggy after taking too long of a nap. So my suggestion would be keep within this parameters 20 minutes to an hour maximum as a nap throughout the day and maybe incorporate that into your routine if you are lacking in sleep at night. You might find that after that nap you can get some better work done or just be more cognitively in tune to what's going on. Now, I also shared a link in the Think Smart Thursday that was a study on LSD and I actually posted that study on Reddit. I've included that in the comments below in this video but what I found most interesting was not really the study so much as all of the different comments that people were making. In fact, there was dozens of people who came out of the woodwork and expressed the fact that they were either alcoholic, they were suffering from anxiety or depression, and they used LSD in order to overcome these types of feelings. And there's tons of evidence to suggest that this happens both in the short term and in the long term. So consider whether this might be useful for you. Now for a lot of people, there seems to be a skepticism around LSD when compared to psilocybin, which is the psychoactive ingredient in mushrooms. Now, one of the main concerns is that LSD is synthetic. It's not a natural compound, and that's only partially true. First of all, LSD is a slightly different chemical compound than another chemical compound found in different mushroom species. So typically, LSD can be synthesized from a natural source. It just requires a couple tweaks in the chemical structure in order to create the more psychoactive LSD. The reason I like LSD more than psilocybin is primarily because it allows you to get a fixed dose, something that you know you can go into an experience and not feel that there's a difference in the, the strength because of the batch or how long it's been out or anything else. And so it just creates a more consistent experience for people who do want to use this psychedelic in order to reduce anxiety, depression, or just see life in a different perspective. Now my experience recently during an LSD trip was again quite a profound one and a few of the things that came up for me were around this concept of saying yes to life and we often find ourselves resisting the challenging parts of life the painful parts the sad parts the parts that are scary but when we are saying no to those parts that are uncomfortable we also say no to the exciting parts to the fun parts to the joyful parts and so saying yes to life means saying yes to all of life, all the challenges, all the hardships that come with it, but also all the joy and all the upside that comes with it as well. An invitation that I would have for you is to consider where you're saying no to life right now. Is there a possibility that something is scaring you, you're not putting your best foot forward, and by doing that, you're also limiting your ability to experience joy and happiness. I really find that taking a full dose of LSD in contrast to microdosing is a really hard reset to connect me and connect other people to source or to some kind of universal energy that provides us with long lasting benefits that are far different than your standard nootropic that you take and experience for a few hours or a day, but instead gives you know weeks, even months in some cases, of benefit and definitely provides lifelong learnings that can improve your quality of life. So anyway guys, I hope that this format is a little bit better for some of you. I know that reading these emails every week has been enjoyable, but this provides a little bit more uh, of an intimate connection with some of these interesting ideas and studies and thoughts that I want to focus on with you. And I hope you find it valuable. If you do, go ahead and leave a comment below, like this video, let me know that you would like me to continue making videos alongside the Think Smart Thursday, and I will see you next time.